Grab your lab coats and prepare for experiments, snoozing and slime, because we're celebrating National Science Week. Libby meets a hospital hero. We delve into Annabelle's dreams as she discovers the science behind sleeping. And it's slime time for Ramon and Professor Jellybean. Rob, our crazy co-host. I'm totally excited for this week's episode because, do you know why? No, we don't know why. Do you know why, Patrick? No. It's National Science Week. Dr. Rob, what do you love about science? Patrick, my favourite thing about science is doing experiments, making weird noises, um, changing the colour of your hair. How did you do that so quickly? Blue. I look away for a second and suddenly you've got blue hair. Um, but basically I like the fact that science can explain the weird things about the world around us. That's what I like about science. Do you guys like science? What's your favourite thing about science if you like science? Um, my favourite thing about science is that you get to do cool experiments. Excellent. We're going to do some today. Patrick, do you have a favourite thing about science? No. Not really. Well, hopefully you will by the end of today. <laughs> Alright, Patrick, you know, I do have some pretty cool sort of sciencey experiments and these ones have got to do with making sounds. You've probably heard me making a sound with this before. Would you think that a cup could make such a weird noise like that? When you kind of go... <coughs> what do you think it sounds like? Mm, I'm not sure. I think it sounds a bit like a quacking duck, but <laughs> it'd be a bit of a sick quacking duck, I imagine. Now, it's really easy to make as well. It's just a piece of string and a cup and something in there to stop the string going through. Now, when you make sounds, it always starts with vibrations. So in this case, there's vibrations in the string. But with just a, a regular piece of string, it doesn't really make much noise, does it? So when you put a cup on the end, the vibrations travel up the string and into the cup, and the cup makes them louder, or in science terms, we say amplifies it. So those noises that are coming just from the string are getting amplified by the cup. It's like acting like a big speaker. It's really pretty cool. Now I'm going to show you another sciencey sound experiment, but this one is going to happen inside your ear. So the people at home won't actually be here, so you'll have to tell them what you're hearing. Now it's really simple. You can make this one yourself. Two bits of string and a coat hanger. So Ella, do you want to try it first? Pretty easy. All you'll need to do, I'll show you what to do. You, you just wrap both bits of string around your fingers. Okay, do you think you can do that for me? So wrap that one around one finger. Yep, just wrap it around a few times. And same on the other side. Wrap it around a few times. Okay, now, I want you to try and poke your fingers just gently in your ears so that the coat hanger is dangling down, not touching anything. It's not touching anything. All right, now I'm just gonna tap the coat hanger, ready? What does it sound like? It's kind of like a ding noise. Ding, it sounds really loud in your ears, doesn't it? Even though none of the rest of us actually heard anything, all those vibrations went traveling up the string, traveling along your finger, and traveling straight into your eardrum. It sounds like a, a big gong going bong, bong. And that's all because of the way vibrations travel. Thanks, Dr. Wump. That was so cool. There's going to be plenty more awesome experiments coming up, so don't go anywhere. But now it's time to meet up with Libby. And some hospital heroes. Hi, I'm Libby, and right now I'm out the front of a superhero hangout. Nope, it's not Batman's Batcave. Nope, we're not in the sewers of New York. Give up already? Well, I'm talking about the hospital heroes that work here at the Gate Lab. They have incredible superpowers that help people walk. Come on, let's go meet a hospital hero right now. Hi, can you tell me what happens at a Gate Lab? Well, Libby, what we do in a gate lab is we analyse how you walk. So we use these markers, we put them on your legs, some on your body, and we get you to walk around our camera system. So those cameras have a really bright light 
and they tell me where these markers are and then it creates a little stick girl on the computer and we can analyse how you walk. That is so cool. <laughs> so what we also have in here is that black mat. What you do is you walk across that mat and we can tell where the pressure is under your feet, whether it's under your big toe or your heel um, while you're walking. Can we go have a look? Of course we can. Let's go. So, what kind of patients do you see here? We see kids that are having trouble with their walking. So most commonly we see children with cerebral palsy, um, spina bifida, um, lots of other different things, but they're the main two. So kids will come in, they'll get a gait assessment um, because they're having pain with their walking and then they'll, we'll see what's wrong and see how we can help them and fix them. I have spina bifida and I also have an appointment coming up. What can you tell kids like me what to expect when they come in here for appointments? So when you come in for an appointment, it is quite a long appointment, so normally about three hours. So you'll come in, you'll do a walk over our little special mat that gets the pictures of your feet. Then you'll go into our physio room and um, our physiotherapist will measure your legs and see how stretchy and floppy they are. And then you'll come out and put all these markers on and you'll do some walking under our cameras. And then we'll take a quick video to finish, take it all off and you get to go home. That sounds so cool, but it also sounds really long and tiring. It is very long and tiring, but we give you lots of little breaks and snacks Yummy! throughout. When kids come in for their appointment, are they allowed to wear like metal, like yeah, like earrings or necklaces or like metal, if they have metal on their shoes? Or... Sometimes, so our cameras really like shiny things. So if you take a photo of this dot with your camera, with your flash on, it will actually shine. So our cameras really like anything shiny. So whenever kids have earrings or a necklace or shiny buckles on their boots, I've got to check that they're not annoying our system. And then we just either take it off or cover it up with some tape. I'm wearing AFOs. Would we have to like take them off or can we keep them on? As best we can, we take them off when we do your walking without your boots on. And then if we need to, we'll put the AFOs back on, either take a video or go and put all the markers back on and do the same thing again with the AFOs. So Libby, if you'd like to have a look at how all this works, hold on to one of these for me and have a look up at my TV screen and wave it around in the air. You'll be able to see it moving oh and I've got goodness. one as well. How cool is that? So when they're all over your legs, we'll join them up with little lines and you'll turn into a stick girl. They are pretty cool, aren't they? <laughs> Apart from the superpower of helping people walk, what other superpower would you like to have? I think I would like to be like Jack-Jack off The Incredibles, mainly because he's got lots of different powers, but I won't tell you because that's in the new movie. He has powers in the first movie as well. Yeah, but I don't want to tell you what happens in the second movie. I would probably choose the power of telekinesis because then you could just like say you're hungry and you were sitting down watching this really good movie and you didn't want to pause it because when you pause it it freezes or something like that you could use like your telekinesis to like, grab some snacks or grab your phone or something like that getting snacks at any point would be awesome <laughs> well there's only one more thing to do hospital hero montage <laughs> She's the goddess of gates. She's armed with powers to help others walk. With high-tech equipment at her disposal. It's Super Danny. On behalf of all the kids from Lady Salento, I thank you so much for all that you do. You are more than welcome and we look forward to seeing you soon, Libby. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Libby. And I'm Super Danny. Bye. Bye. It's time to get to know your scientist, uh, I mean, host for this week's episode. Patrick is six years old, loves throwing the footy, catching the footy and watching the footy. His cousin Ella is ten years old and loves cats and painting. And today they're joined by zany TV scientist Dr Rob, who's randomly been bitten by lots of different animals. My favourite sport is swimming, and my favourite kick is freestyle. 
My favourite player is Dale Copley. He even came and visited me and saw this ball. My favourite sport is soccer, and when I'm not supporting the Brisbane Roar, I guess it would have to be Tottenham Hotspur. The Brisbane Roar came and visited me too. Well, I've never had a visit from the Brisbane Roar, so you've got one up on me there, Patrick. Did they give you that? Did they tie it around your leg? That was you. No. <laughs> My favourite movie is The Spectrum on Me 3. My favourite movie is The Game Plan. My favourite movie is either Back to the Future, any of them, or The Princess Bride. This is my favourite song. It's the Gold Coast Titans. We are the Gold Coast Titans. Together we belong. Go, 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 Coast Titans. My favourite band is the Wombats, and my favourite song from them is This Is Not A Party. My favourite band would have to be They Might Be Giants, because they sing a song about the sun. That goes, the sun is a mass of incandescent gas, of hydrogen turning into helium, and there's more, but it's kind of science. -y. Wait, I need to go and fix the door. <laughs> this is the wombat. This is not a party, it's a hurricane. This is not a party, it's a hurricane. I don't really care, I'm never gonna change. This is not a party, it's a hurricane. Oh. I don't know about you two, but all that dancing is just making me tired. I won't have a, just a little sleep here if that's all right. Well, that's perfect, because our next story is all about sleeping. Hey, what did you say? Sorry, have I been out long? No. Oh, hello Annabelle. Thanks for seeing me today. Lovely to see you. What can I help you with today? I haven't been sleeping very well and I've been having bad dreams. Hmm, problems getting to sleep and bad dreams. Yes, very oh. bad dreams. This is a rather curious predicament, but I think I know just the thing to help you out. Wait here. <laughs> This should have you sleeping soundly in no time. Cinnamon donut, my favourite! <laughs> ha, another strange dream. I wish I knew why I couldn't get to sleep. Well, Annabelle, this is a sleep centre, so you've come to the right place. How did I get here? I believe you were sleepwalking when you came in here. Ah, uh, sorry about that. Don't worry, sleepwalking, bad dreams are all things that people experience, but it's something that we can help with when we do our study here. Really? How does it work? It's really easy. We just look at what your body's doing while you're asleep. So you come in for one night with your mum or your dad. You can watch movies, you can play games, you can watch TV. We just stick lots of stickers and wires on and that sends information through to our computer to tell you what your body's doing while you're asleep. That makes a lot more sense than a donut filled with crocodiles. Can I try it? Of course you can. Does that sound good to you, Mum? DVD ads are ready. Perfect, let's get set up. First thing we need to do is attach some leads to your head with some special paste. I'm just going to measure Annabelle just from here all the way around your head and pop a little dot on where I need to put my stickers. And now Annabelle, these are the wires that we stick on. Does the different colours indicate the different places you have to put them? Not the colours, but they're all labelled with special names and they all go into a certain place. Just a little push. Do these let you read my thoughts? Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. do. Baby shark. Not quite. These wires help us read your brain waves, so we can see what stage sleep you're in. All right, Annabelle, we're just going to put your special hat on, and this helps keep all the wires in place when you're asleep. Look at you. 
These are our special belts, Annabelle. One goes around your chest, one goes around your tummy, and it helps us look at your breathing pattern. These are just little prongs, they just sit under your nose, and they just help us see you breathing through your nose. And that's it, you're all ready for your sleep study. Now to burn some energy, the only way I know it. Hit it! Annabelle, time to wake up, sweetheart. Did the sleep test work? You did an awesome job. We got all the information we needed. How did it go? It was good. It wasn't as scary as I thought it was coming in. Now I can get a better night's sleep. Thanks, Anne. My pleasure. Bye. you to be a part of Juice TV. We're always on the lookout for hosts, interviewers, behind the scenes helpers and mini producers. You can be any age, you don't have to have any experience. How much easier could it be? To find out the next time we're filming at the hospital, just head to our website, juicedtv.com.au or our Facebook page. For loads of fun to break up your stay in hospital, join the Juice crew. Send us an email at hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to any of the volunteers wearing green shirts throughout the hospital and let them know you want to be involved in the one and only Juice TV. Welcome back. It's time for another science experiment. All right, my next science experiment is kind of, kind of like science, but it might seem a bit like magic. Anyway, let me explain. You've got to pay careful attention to my three empty polystyrene cups. I'm just going to lay them out like that. I'm going to tip water into mm, this one. Water goes in uh, about halfway. Now I'm going to start mixing them up. And this is where you've got to use your careful observational skills to try and remember which one the water's in. OK. I think you've remembered. OK, I'm going to mix them up again. Still think you know where the water is? Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to have to do a bit more mixing. I'll go a little bit quicker now. You still think you know where the water is? Sure. Oh, a bit more mixing. Yeah. Do you still think you know where it is? Is it in this one? No. This one? This one? Yeah. So it's definitely not in this one? No. Okay, you're right. So it's one of these two, you reckon? Let's mix them up again. Okay, do you think it's in this one? This one? Yeah. Mm, I gotta mix it a bit better. Do you think it's in this one? Yeah. This one? I still think it's in that one. Always in this one. <laughs> uh, oh. Is it in this one? Yeah. Is it in this one? Yeah. So it's, it's definitely in that one. Sure. Oh, so it must be in this one. No. But where's it gone? Guess what? It was in here, but it's sort of not in there either. Wait a minute. Ugh. Ugh. There's your water. It's changed into this goopy stuff. How about that, huh? Because I played a little trick on you. See this white powdery stuff at the bottom? That, that white powdery stuff is stuff that they use in nurseries sometimes. It, it's a plastic that soaks up water. It's really good at sucking up water. So I poured the water in there and I waited about 30 seconds and actually sucked all the water up and turned it into kind of like this solid, mushy gump. It's actually also inside nappies. This hasn't come from a nappy, it's all right. This is just water and that plasticky stuff. But that's what they use it for as well. Pretty cool, huh? It's, a it's like a thirsty plastic. It's sodium polyacrylate, just in case someone asks you, but that's not important. 
Ooh, it feels smushy and it's slimy. Speaking of slime, here's Professor Jellybean. To some people, science is this. And pictures of this guy, Albert Einstein. If this is all science is to you, then you're doing it wrong. Science is epic, freaky and fun. Check out this picture. It's Einstein, sticking out his tongue. Completely made out of Lego. Get a load of this. Professor Jellybean has dropped in to show us how epic science can be. The crew from the hospital school are tagging along. First up there, let's join Professor Jellybean. Professor Jellybean, what is science? Well, science can be lots of different things. Um, when things change in the environment, um, the science that we're doing today is lots of gooey, slimy, messy stuff. That's what we're going to be experimenting with. Why do you like science? Um, it's lots of fun, it's very interesting. You get to learn so much about the environment, about um, experiments, things changing. It's just, and I love getting my hands into gooey, slimy, messy stuff. Well, I like science because I get to like play with buns and burners and stuff like that. Awesome, blowing things up, explosions. <laughs> Professor Jellybean, what is your job? Well, I do lots of different things. So I go around to schools and I go into the classes and teach the kids science. We all get dressed up in lab coats and glasses and get our hands into some gooey, slimy stuff. We also do birthday parties for kids as well, which is lots of fun and child cares, vacation care. So we're around all the time. Experiment number one, stretchy, slimy sand. Yeah. Who's ready to get started? In this cup here, we have our special solution. Now, this stuff does feel a little bit sticky because it's made from the same thing glue is made from. Have you guys used white glue before for craft? Yeah? Well, this is what they make it out of, but today, we're going to change it into our slimy, stretchy sand. Now, first thing we're going to add, we have some corn flour. Now this is something that is used for cooking, but remember, we're not going to be eating it. That would just be disgusting. Now we're going to be measuring in one spoonful. So taking turns, sharing it around, get it nice and level. The next thing we're going to be adding we have some coloured sand. So this is going to make it nice and colourful. So this time, we're going to use that big side of the spoon and we're going to measure in one spoonful. So getting it nice and full, you can give it a bit of a jiggle to level it off into our cup and then, then give it a good mix around. Excellent. So how many spoonfuls? One, using that big side. Yeah, great job, guys. OK, guys, have we made slime yet? No. No, we've just made a really awesome looking slimy solution. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to create a chemical reaction. Now all that means guys, is we're going to add one thing to another thing to have a really cool change happen. So guys, this is our linking agent here. Now the job of our linking agent is to link and join everything together in your cup. Squeeze it till it's full to the top. That's one and two. Then give it a mix and have a look straight away. We can see that change. <laughs> now, once we've seen that change, we're gonna take our stick out and snap our lid on. Then we're gonna give it a really good shake. So have you guys got strong shaking muscles today? Yeah. Great helping, guys. Yep, keep it in. Let's get the results, homie. How 
How does it feel? Um, gooey and sticky. Look at it! I need to warm it up. Oh, look! <laughs> it's just doing nothing! Earlier, you would have thought this about science. Science. <laughs> then we cranked it up into this. Awesome scientists today. Did you guys all have fun? Yeah! Excellent. And that, my friend, is what science is all about. Thanks to Professor Jelly Beans for helping us out. I'm Ramon. Peace out. Well, that slime looks gooey. I want to see another experiment. Do you have any, Dr. Rob? <laughs> Funny you should ask, because I do. Ella, Patrick, are you ready to see a cup disappear? Yeah. We've made water disappear, and that was kind of tricky, I guess. This time I'm gonna to try to make a cup disappear. Can you tell me first, though, what is this cup made out of? Any ideas? Have a guess. Foam? Foam. It is made out of foam. You got it in the first time. It's made out of foam. Sometimes people call it styrofoam or polystyrene, but it's a type of foam. We're gonna find out what the main ingredient in here in this foam cup is by gently just sitting it down in my bowl. You ready? Watching. I want you to watch carefully, Patrick. I'm just gonna just pop it down there. Tell me if you notice anything happening. It's what is going on? Oh my god. It's like shrinking or? It's sinking. It's sinking. Under the water. But is it going out? Have a look underneath. Is it going down there? It's really melting. Isn't that really weird? Let me, now don't stick your fingers in there just yet. I'll, oh. I'll get this goop out. We had slime before and look, we've got some more. <laughs> See this stuff here? I'll get that out of the way, get my bowl out of the way. Oh, it smells weird. <laughs> it smells weird, that stuff, that's right. See this here? That is the entire amount of plastic. It feels cold. Oh my god, it's so That's the entire amount of plastic in one of these cups. All of the rest of the stuff is actually air. Foam is mostly air. That's what makes these cups really good at being able to have hot drinks and stuff in them. That is the entire amount of plastic. So we put it in a special liquid there that helps to soften all of the plastic and let all of the air out, and that oh, yeah. is what's left. And you know what we'll do? I can leave this with you guys, because what'll happen is when all of that, that smelly stuff eventually evaporates away, this will turn back into a crispy chunk of plastic again. Except it'll be a lot smaller, it won't turn back into a cup. I'm not that clever. But that is how much plastic is in one of those cups. Oh. Pretty amazing, huh? Yeah. It's not amazing, it's science. Dun dun dun. Thank you for coming in today, Dr. Wobb. You're very welcome. Now well, remember whether you're in the gate lab or, or in a sleep study or making slime or making things disappear, science is all around us, especially during National Science Week. I'm Patrick. I'm Ella. And I'm Dr. Rob. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Am I looking at you? <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> it's National Science Week. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Remember, guys, it's so easy to be a part of Juice TV. Whether you want to be a host, help us out behind the scenes with filming, or decide what goes into each episode. Let us know you want to be involved by sending an email to hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to one of the friendly volunteers throughout the hospital in the green shirts. Also, head to our website and Facebook page for all the updates about what we're filming at the hospital.